This has been the worst kept secret in tech history. This is Intel's new chipset, new socket, and new CPUs, and we're taking a look at the MSI MPG Z890 Carbon Wi-Fi. But as usual with these motherboard videos, this video is not a review. It's just an overview and a bit of a first look because at the time of publishing this video, all we're allowed to do is acknowledge the existence of this stuff. So let's dive in and take a look. Spoiler alert, these boards have been sitting here for a very, very long time. Let's take a look. Here it is, ladies and gents, the MSI MPG Z890 Carbon Wi-Fi. Let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a bit of a quick look at everything that comes with this brand new board that supports these new Intel Core Ultra Series 2 processors. First of all, we've got this. This is the Easy Connector. This is essentially a proprietary cable that splits both the RGB and PWM signals for fans. There's also a set of SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or those good old spinning rust drives. There's a set of RGB splitter and extension cables that come with the board as well. There's an extension cable for the front panel cables and wires just to make it a little bit easier for you to build. There's an additional M.2 clip which comes with the board as well. This is just in case you wanted to change the top slot to the new clip that these MSI boards have started to use. There's also this USB stick with all of the software and applications you need to get yourself up and running. This does not have a copy of Windows on it. There's a bunch of documentation and labels so you can put them on your cables when you're building your system so you know what everything is and where everything goes. And there's an antenna for the built-in Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4. All right, let's unsheath this brand new Z890 board and take a bit of a look at what makes this new platform different. First of all, let's take a look at the bottom of the board here. We've got a front panel audio header. There's a four pin 12 volt RGB header. There is a PCIe power connector, which I'll come back to and explain why that's there in a moment. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header. There's a Thunderbolt 5 header if you have the correct add-in card. Something we'll talk about in another video. Two USB 2.0 headers for liquid coolers and RGB controllers and all that kind of stuff. There's some PWM fan headers down the bottom as well. And then we've got the front panel connector for all your lights and all your switches to turn on your system and to let you know that it's on and another three pin five volt addressable RGB header. Back to this PCIe power connector, the idea behind this is it supplies additional power to PCIe slots and for PD charging over USB-C. Along the right hand edge of the board, there's some right angled SATA or SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives two USB 3.2 type A headers. There's also a USB type C front panel header. This is 20 gig USB type C. We've then got that easy connector, which is used for that cable that splits out both PWM and RGB on these new MSI boards. There's a 24 pin power connector to send juice to your brand new board. There's a debug LED screen and a debug LED array on the surface of the board. There's a three pin five volt addressable RGB header and three more PWM fan headers. There's two here and then there's one next to the EPS power connectors, which is an interesting thing on its own. Essentially, MSI has moved all of their Z890 EPS power connectors to right above the RAM slots. I'm not sure why they've done this. It's probably a technical reason, but I would say for signal integrity purposes and for additional power to the RAM slots, but still not sure why they've done this because we do have Gigabyte boards and ASUS boards and no one else is doing this. As for the PCIe slot configuration, this is a new platform, so it does things a little bit differently. The top PCIe slot is a by 16 size PCIe Gen 5 slot. The next slot down is a PCIe by 16 size slot, but it's a PCIe Gen 5 by 8 slot. And then there's a PCIe Gen 4 by 4 slot right down the bottom. Now, here's what's interesting about this new PCIe slot at the top. It's got a latching mechanism with a lock icon. And when you depress that, you'll notice that the status will change for the slot. It basically just lets you know if it's open or closed. 
and it's got a very satisfying click and maybe it's better than other solutions. As for the VRM here, this one is something I'm not sure about. There's not a lot of info right now. I'm going to say it's going to be the same as the X870 eBoard being an 18 plus 2 plus 1 phase VRM. We do see this with MSI at the moment with them having both the same VRM layout for their Intel and AMD boards. And because that is the closest match to this, I guess that would be the case. As for the new socket, this is LGA 1851. The cooler mounting is the same as LGA 1700. However, there are some differences here. The ILM is a little bit different from LGA 1700 here. I won't go into technical specifications. We will have a full cooler compatibility guide when this whole new platform comes out because then we can show performance. But if we open up the LGA 1718 socket for the first time, there are a few differences in things that you will notice. First of all, you will notice on the left hand side of the socket, there are more pins than say an LGA 1700 socket and the inside of the socket is no longer symmetrical. There is a reason for this and that's because the CPUs are more capable than their previous generations, which is something that we can't talk about just yet. But the keying in the socket, which is the little notch at the top of the CPU or on the side that allows you to insert it correctly, has moved to the top of the socket and it's no longer on the sides of the socket. So that is something a little bit different. And just taking a look at the socket from a bit of a different angle, you can see that it is less symmetrical. This angle shows you how different the ILM now is. It's less complicated and it sits a little bit lower to the socket, which supposedly gives better loading pressure on the socket. But as I mentioned, when we have new generations for things that we haven't seen before, we typically do a full compatibility guide and we explain the difference with the socket in depth. We can't do that just yet, but Make sure you subscribe for that one there. As for the rear side of the board, there's not a lot going on here. Typical MSI stuff here with all of the keep out zones showing you where not to put stuff in your case and taking a look at the RAM situation. Now, this one is a little bit interesting considering that we don't know what the maximum speed is, but it does support 256 gigs of DDR5 RAM and it will also support CU DIMMs. One thing of note is because the EPS power connectors are above the RAM slots, the clips for the four slots are now moved to the bottom and they sit just above the top PCIe slot. In terms of the PCIe M.2 storage solution, there's a lot of M.2 slots on this board. There's five in total. There's one PCIe Gen 5 by 4 M.2 slot and the rest are PCIe Gen 4. To be honest, PCIe Gen 4 M.2 drives are so fast that PCIe Gen 5 drives right now are just not really needed for any type of application intensive workloads. I mean, not for the regular user that is anyway. And again, from this angle, you'll see there's just so many M.2 slots on this board. This is kind of in the age where we're seeing less SATA drives and more M.2 storage, which is something that I can definitely get behind. I've also got to give MSI a little bit of credit here because on their motherboards, they typically label what each of the M.2 slots is capable of. I'm sorry for this clip being a little bit out of focus, but you know. It is what it is, but you can get the idea of what's going on here. It does make it a lot easier when you're building because then you don't have to open up the manual and see what each slot does. Also, having seen these on the new X870 boards from MSI, I'm a big fan of these. These are like little joysticks that hold the drives into place. And the way this works is you can just use one finger and it clips in and to take it back out, you just push the little knob one way and you can pull your drive straight out. For re-IO, there's a whole lot going on here. All right. There's 10 USB type A 10 gig ports on the back of this board. There's two Thunderbolt 4 ports. There's a BIOS flashback button, clear CMOS. There's a smart button. There's 2.5 gigabit ethernet with the usual suspect, the Intel i226V controller, as well as Intel killer E5000B 5 gigabit ethernet. There's also the Realtek ALC 1220P audio codec, and that's for your sound. And there's also Wi-Fi 7 and a Bluetooth 5.4 integrated into this board as well. The most interesting thing about this board is 
It has a single USB type C port, which is on its own USB type C controller. That's only 10 gigabit, but those two ports you're seeing on the rear are full Thunderbolt 4 ports. Intel's really gonna be pushing Thunderbolt 4 with this new generation. This is full 40 gig Thunderbolt 4, which means on these two ports, you will get PCIe tunneling. I hope you enjoyed this first look at an overview of the MSI MPG Z890 Carbon Wi-Fi. While I can show you the board and talk about the specifications of the board, there's a lot that we can't talk about yet because there is a review embargo for this new platform from Intel. But what I can talk about is little specific things like USB 4 being baked into the CPU. Uh, also, you know what? I'm not even going to attempt fate here because after my escapades at Computex, I may or may not have been sent to Intel jail. I'm not sure, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Uh, at the Gigabyte booth this year, I showed inside of the socket and they weren't happy and they asked me to take that part of the video down. So I did. That's what happened to that part of the video. There's comments about it on the video as well. Like, what happened to this part of the video? That's what happened. I haven't acknowledged it until now, yeah. So hopefully I'm not in Intel Gulag and now I'm out of Intel jail. We'll see what happens. We don't know anything just yet. However, we did go to China with MSI to take a look at all of the Z890 stuff. We just dropped a factory tour so you can see how the Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi is made on a production line, which I think is pretty interesting. It's kind of a nice look to see how things are made and like the thought process that goes into automating all of these processes. I honestly think it's cool. It's a great opportunity. So shout out to MSI for that. They're not sponsoring this video. I just thought I would mention that because yeah, it's not often you get invited to go to China to go and look at how motherboards that haven't been announced are made. Very, very cool stuff. Anyways, let us know what you think of probably the million videos that are gonna flood your feed when this video goes live or have already gone live. I don't know how it works. Like I say, guys, YouTube is a time machine. I'm currently not even here when this video goes live. I'm elsewhere. Can't say too much about that either. Hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, this new Intel generation is looking like, I'm gonna say it because I know a lot of stuff about this that I can't talk about. But what I will say from what I do know is,